welcome to Spring First Church. Will you stand to your feet as we praise the Lord tonight?
Such an easy thing for you to do And your hand is moving right now You are still showing up At the tomb of every Lazarus And your voice is calling a battle. No, you've never lost a battle. And I know, I know, you never win. Everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. Like it's Jericho My walls are all crashing down It's right now I know you're able My God, come through again You can do all things You can do all things 
can you call it my victory?
There's nothing better There's nothing better In the evening when I lay my head down And in the evening when I close my eyes You're still the only one I want to cling to You're the last thought is rise all creation cries singing out in endless hallelujah from this moment join with heaven so singing out in endless let our voices rise all creation cries come on Give the Lord a praise in his house. Come on, give the Lord a praise in his house. There's nothing better than being right here now. Amen. If you're new to our church today, just would you be seated? We want to take a moment just before we continue. 
and welcome you. What a great presence of the Holy Spirit is in our worship tonight. Amen. As you're being seated, the ushers will bring to you a visitor's card. Please fill that out. Drop it in the offering later. And uh, we just want to say welcome. Church, would you give all of our guests a one wonderful applause tonight and let them know how glad we are they're here. And now, as they, would you just take a moment and shake hands with those near you that are that are seated and welcome one another. And uh, we're glad that all of you are here tonight. Amen. All right, we're so happy that you made it back tonight for Sunday night church. We're kicking it old school, doing Sunday night service. How many of you grew up or remember going to Sunday night all the time? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like it. We're glad all of you are here with us tonight. It's gonna be a great, great night. And if you are new or visiting from another church, we're happy to be partnering with like-minded type people. Any friend of Luke Holter is a friend of mine. So we, we welcome uh, any of you that might be visiting from some other churches. I see uh, some of our other same type people <laughs> from other ministries. We're glad you guys are here. We're gonna take a moment before we turn the service over to Brother Luke, we're going to give you an opportunity to partner your own finances with the kingdom of God in this ministry. And I'm going to ask you to do that liberally. I want our community, even if you're maybe not, maybe if you're visiting from another church, be, be a part of, of uh, this. I, we want our, our city to be connected to the, the ministry of Brother Luke. We were talking this morning about the blessing and favor that came upon people when they partnered with, with traveling ministries. There's lots of uh, different ways that you can give. There's different types of offerings that are to be given and engaged and different types of offerings have different blessing and favor. Did you know that? Tithing, tithing will rebuke the devourer. But did you know that, did you know that Jesus is, I heard somebody say one time, you know, you never see anywhere in the Bible Jesus taking an offering. Well, I'm, I'm sorry that you missed the part where uh, Jesus had a, a group of, uh, of, tra of people traveling with him ministry partners that were partnering with him financially to make things happen. Hey, they had a significantly large group of people traveling with them that he would have been responsible to be making sure that these people are being fed while they're in the service of the ministry and working for him. 
He had ministry partners. You can't have a treasurer without having a treasure. And it's important to be partnering with, with a traveling ministry. I would encourage you, if you're from our church, I want you to consider and pray about partnering with Luke Holter all throughout the year. And you can give to him just like you would a, a, a missionary, just because he's a, a different one of the five-fold you know, missionaries are usually evangelists that are traveling abroad. He's doing the same thing. Evangelizing, but carrying the mantle of prophet and ministering in a different way. We want to be connected. So I would, I would encourage you to pray about asking the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to do anything? What would you have me to do on a consistent basis? You can do that through our church or you can give straight to him. I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter to me, but it matters to him. And we want you to be partnered. So you can do that. Anything that comes in marked for Luke Holter will always go directly to him. The entire offering tonight uh, is going to him uh, in his ministry as well. So one of the things that the Lord's taught me over the last five years is the, the, the breakthrough that happens when you sow a seed that hurts. Sowing a seed of sacrifice out of obedience Be a giver. Live life with an open hand. Let's pray for his ministry tonight. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you. We thank you for Luke and his ministry and what he has meant to us. We thank you that he's a, he is a gift to us and to Spring First Church, to this, this community and the other churches that he's impacted around here. And Lord, we just come together. We're grateful for his life and the gift that he uses to minister to people. We pray, oh God, that you would help us to be partnered with him spiritually, financially. We pray that this offering would bless his ministry, multiply. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the greatest year of resources that his ministry has ever, ever seen. And I pray tonight, Lord, that we would just be the, the launching point of that here at the beginning of the year. And we thank you for all of these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Brother Luke, come let it rip, my man. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> I am excited about tonight. Uh, I'm excited about what the Holy Spirit's saying and doing. My encouragement to all of you this evening is don't disengage, don't mentally unplug. Um, sometimes when, uh, <laughs> there, there's a few things that happens when a prophet comes to preach at a church. Um, people get excited or worried, <laughs> depending on what's going on in their private life. Um, <clears throat> or people tend to disengage during the sermon part and then they get engaged at the end hoping for a word. Now, <laughs> my encouragement to you is this whole service is going to be prophecy tonight. And so I want you to fully engage, bring your attention to it. There's some sobering prophetic truths that we're gonna uncover tonight looking into 2024. We are told we don't know when Jesus will come back, amen? We don't know, Jesus doesn't even know. The Bible tells us only God knows. But we're rebuked for not knowing the seasons. And so the Lord does nothing, the word tells us. It says the Lord does nothing without first revealing it to his prophets. Which means this is not to uh, impress value upon myself, but I do serve the Lord in this office. And if you're not listening to me, hopefully you're listening to another healthy prophetic voice and getting direction and insight from the Lord because God does nothing. Everybody say nothing without first revealing it to his prophets. So God wants to make the church ready for 2024, amen? And so we've got some stuff we're getting into. The, I guess if you were gonna give it a title, it would be insight into 2024 that we need to know. I'm speaking tonight 
um, on a general word, on the economy, on uh, government, on some other things. And uh, we're going to just have to be ready for tonight for what the Holy Spirit wants to unpack. I'm going to pray real quick, then we're going to get it on like Donkey Kong. How does that sound? Good. Are you with me? Are you awake? Are you alive? Are you excited about what God's going to do? All right, close your eyes and bow your heads. Lord, we thank you for this evening. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to speak. Um, we, we surrender our free will for your voice. Father, I pray that tonight people would gain insight, wisdom, that they would make real life plans tonight. For 2024, that they would, that they would chart a course with you, Holy Spirit. For 2024, that they would get their business, their finances, their families, their spirituality. Father, that we would align to your plan. Father, um, we rebuke the spirit of distraction in the name of Jesus. Father, um, we thank you for the ability to silence our phones. Lord, we pray that you would quicken us to silence our phones. <laughs> Lord, uh, that we would not be distracted in the service but that we would be able to tune in and absorb. I pray that everyone in this room, Father, would be good soil to receive your word. In your name we pray, amen. I'm excited about sharing prophetic insight uh, into the new year. That's something that I've been doing for a while now at Spring First. And um, it's wild. God loves Spring First so much that I deliver the word for the year here before I deliver it at my own home church where I'm on staff at. <laughs> I'm delivering it later this month at my own church, but um, this is just how the Lord has lined it up uh, since we started speaking into the new year. So um, I love how God lines it up, and I love Spring First Church. And I want to encourage you, um, when pastor is talking about giving, how many of you know that when you mingle your finances into a ministry, you are mingling more than just your money? You are mingling blessing, your life, literally the things that our ministry accomplishes that you sow into, you, you get credit for before the Lord. It's as if you did it, which means people that sow in, we, you know, we rescue sex trafficked orphans. We have over 90 sex trafficked orphans that we've rescued at $1,000 an orphan. We have three orphanages in Columbia where we go in and we send locals in to the pimps and they buy trafficked children where we take care of them on a daily basis, medication, support, uh, even cutting through the red tape of adoption to help adopt out some of these kids to Christian families in the United States. So God's opening up all these amazing doors. We have 15 single moms in Houston that have all been victims of trafficking that we've helped rescue. We've worked alongside... Uh, uh, anti-human trafficking ministries like Elijah Rising and different ones where we've been able to fully support these single moms in Houston. Our ministry has alone, I'm not talking about my church, I'm talking about Luke Holter and Prophetic Sheep Ministries that we've been able to take 15 single moms and fully provide every month their rent or mortgage, their groceries, their gas, their food, their kids' school supplies, doctor's appointments when their cars break down. We're able to meet all that need through what people have given and through my own family. We're, we're, not, we're not asking you to do something we're not doing. We're fully invested, and every spare dime we have goes into these families. And because people so were able to do it, we've led tens of thousands to Christ in a matter of five years. I've been doing this over 20 years, so you can just multiply that. In the last five years, we've led tens of probably, I would say, 50,000 to Christ in the last five years. We've led over 5,000 Muslims out of Islam and into Christianity. We've got pictures that we can't show on the internet of me on video in the Middle East doing prophetic conferences. I did a prophetic women's conference <laughs> in the Middle East, and there's all these women with their hijabs on, like watching me, raising their hands, accepting Christ. Like, I'm just telling you, that's, that is, as great as that is, that is your, when you sew in, that is your inheritance. You stand before the Father and he looks at you and he goes, wow, you did all that. 
You participated in it. You helped us dig ditches in the kingdom. Amen? I just like to say that because sometimes people don't, you know, they're like, oh, that's neat. We're going to give into a ministry. But I want you to know some of the stuff that we're doing so that you can connect with it. A lot of people look at us and they go, man, they're rich. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we are blessed and highly favored. But we need people to help us. I've been doing this. This is my 21st year of full-time traveling ministry. And at this point, we have about six monthly supporters ranging from $5 a month all the way up to $100 a month. And so when I tell you we need people to join us, I'm not trying to take, I, I feel safe saying this, I'm not trying to take any finances from Spring First, but this is for anybody online that's watching or anybody that feels they want to do it. We need help. We need supporters. And um, people often assume that when we do that, that someone else is picking up the slack. I promise you they're not. And we did, a, we did a poll, an anonymous poll through MailChimp to find out why people give or don't give. And probably 90% of the response was, we just assumed someone else was giving. But when that happens, less than 1% give because they assume someone else is giving. So just pray about it in this new year. Pray about supporting our ministry. I promise you the Lord's worth it and what we're doing is good and it's pure. Amen? Okay, love you. <laughs> I, I am not good about talking about money. And it's one of the things that the Lord's been challenging me on uh, about ascribing value to what we do. You know, we're, we're not trying to manipulate anybody with, that's why I don't have pictures of orphans all over the place because I don't, I don't want to show you their faces. They're exploited enough. If you want to give, you can give. Okay. Amen to your face. I also want to invite everybody September 19th through the 22nd this year, for everybody online and everybody that's here at Spring First, uh, September 19th through the 22nd, we have the Samuel Conference at Risen Nation Church in Pasadena, where I'm on staff. And I'm saying that because some of you um, have gone through the Samuel Institute. And if you have gone through the Samuel Institute, you get special access to meet the speakers and have them pray for you this year. And so we have Chuck Pierce coming in. We have Bobby Connor. We have Reggie Dabbs and myself and some others that are going to be uh, speaking and teaching at the conference as well. Um, but there'll be more information all over social media. But I just wanted to invite you all this year to the Samuel Conference. It's going to be awesome. I could not believe who we have coming in. For those of you who don't know Chuck Pierce, he's an amazing prophet. And uh, so is Bobby Connor. Bobby Connor is an amazing prophet. He is about as unreligious as you can get. He's an 80 year old mountain man that's a prophet, and he's got some humdinger stories. <laughs> he used to fight bears. <laughs> Before he knew the Lord, he was a town drunk and he would fight bears. They call him the gentle giant because he's massive. Uh, just a crazy man that loves Jesus. But, anyways, come on out. It's going to be awesome. So, Let's look into 2024. Y'all ready? All right, put on your prophetic goggles because we're going in. Jump in, the water's fine. Okay. <clears throat> so this actually started in 2020. There was a shift that took place in the supernatural and in the physical in 2020. Something happened called COVID. When 2020 hit, I felt like I was the one fish going against the stream <laughs> in the prophetic. Because every prophetic voice that was quote unquote ministry famous was coming out and saying, it's the year of perfect vision. 2020, it's the year of perfect insight and perfect vision. And I was not getting that message. The prophetic word that I got at the end of 2019, which I released in 2020, was that it wasn't the year of perfect vision. It was the year that we would need to learn to adjust our vision that we cannot look at things through the secular lens, but we have to look at things through the spiritual lens, otherwise we would lose hope. What happened in January of 2020? COVID hit. All these things started going on in 2020 that required the church to adjust its vision. 
I believe that we do a disservice to the body of Christ when we send them into a new year with a easy canned word. We need more than just, hey, it's gonna be blessing. It will be blessing, but the true prophetic doesn't just address blessing, but it also informs you of the possible pitfalls that are coming so that you're not taken by surprise, amen? The church needs to be made aware because when 2020 hit and COVID hit, people were like, how come none of the prophets said anything? We did, we just weren't famous. All the big prophetic voices on God TV and Daystar and all that stuff, they were the ones that were just saying, it's gonna be awesome, Nothing's, nothing bad's gonna happen. It's going to be the year of perfect vision. The fulfillment of every desire you've had in the Lord in 2020 will be fulfilled. That's not what happened. <laughs> Can we agree corporately that that's not what happened in 2020? <laughs> People lost their jobs, their lives. There was a lot that we needed to adjust our vision so we didn't become offended by God. But I believe that there was a supernatural demarcation that took place in 2020, and God began to keep his eye on the church. There was a measuring going on. There was literally God watching, and he's always watching, but it was the Lord watching from 2020 till 2024, I believe. I believe that there was a season where God started in 2020 saying, all right, I'm paying attention right now to the church in a unique way to watch what's going on from 2020 to 2024. I believe that this was a court case period of time. And I believe that the Lord has stepped out in 2024 and 2024 is a year of the Lord carrying out his judgment. Now when I say judgment, charismatic Christians tend to jump into the pendulum of judgment. Oh, no. When the judge judges in your favor, that's a good thing. So we need to change. Our, when we hear judgment, we're like, oh, no. Fire, hellfire, brimstone, like every disease. It's going to be a famine. It's going to be awful. No, when a judge judges in your favor, you get the inheritance you were promised. When a judge judges in your favor, it brings justice to areas of injustice. And I believe that the Lord has even let the secular government of the world do what it wanted for a degree for these four years. And I believe in 2024, it's where the smoke of the world has filled the nostrils of God. And he's saying, enough. The smoke show isn't over yet. 2024 has got some rascals in it. Let me put it that way. There's still some things that are going to come up. The devil has not played his hand fully. But the Lord is going to intervene. And the Lord has been looking at this, the four years that we've been waiting, that God has been measuring. He's been looking at the bride saying, what do you believe what are you going to do? Are you going to be passive? Are you going to sit back and let it happen to you? What are you going to do? Are you going to allow the enemy to retell the world who Jesus is and what the church is? Because that's what's been happening. God has been waiting for the bride to respond. And some have, but most haven't. We've sat back and we've said, God, intervene. And he's like, stand up. Make the kingdom known. Reach out to the lost. Reach out to the world. Also, declare what you believe, not in a political spirit, but in a kingdom-minded spirit. That yes plays out politically. Ooh, we're going to get into it tonight. You know, if Dr. Luke's talking about politics, it's the Lord, because I don't do that. Jesus was not a Republican, and he's not a Democrat. <laughs> He operates by a whole nother kingdom. But we still have a responsibility to vote the conscience of the Bible. The Lord has been watching and judging all things. He's shifting things in 2024. 2024 is going to be a year of shifting. So that's why I, pro I preached this morning about the importance of being anchored in Jesus regardless of what you see. 
Because as the ground beneath you begins to shake and shift, some of it will be chaos, but mostly it's going to be the Lord shaking and shifting and sifting. And so we will have to be anchored in him so we don't misappropriate the shaking because shaking makes us uncomfortable. But in these few years from 2020 to 2024, we have faced the fire of offense. We have faced the wind of opposition. And we have, sh we have faced the earthquake that shakes everything we're comfortable with. Now 2024 is a year of the still small voice. What did the prophet do when he heard the still small voice? The word tells us he covered his face. Why did he cover his face? Because he knew he was going to ascend the mountain and see God. Now the word mountain in the Hebrew means promotion. We talked about it earlier in a prophetic word. I believe 2024 is a mountain year. It's going to be a year of great blessing and promotion to those that are faithful that stay anchored. Amen? Amen. Now, the number 20 in the Strong's Concordance symbolizes, in the Greek, it symbolizes the perfect period of waiting. We're breaking down 2024 into two sets of numbers, really. We're going to be breaking them down into three sets of numbers, really. 20 means the perfect period of waiting. It requires something that Christians are not great at. Patience. Wait, we don't like waiting. We're like, no, I need, Jesus, I need it. <laughs> I want my money and I want it now. What is that, J.G. Wentworth? 877 cash now. We want the breakthrough now. We want the thing now. And the Lord's saying, let me mature some things in you. It's not that he wants you to suffer. It's that he wants you to grow in your faith and your strength. Listen, if we truly believe the Bible, then it, listen, if you are a Bible-believing Christian and you believe in the book of Revelation, then there is some measure of turmoil we're going to go through and you're going to need some depth. When somebody's standing in front of you saying, look, I'm going to put a bullet in your head if you don't deny Christ, you're going to need some strength. Just like you don't think it's hard for Christians in China that have this new social credit score? They can't buy groceries. All they have is a miracle left. All they have is the faithfulness of God, which is everything. Amen? But can I tell you, if we were to switch America with China, where the church is now in America, we would not make it. Because Christians in America are not persecuted. We are inconvenienced. And there's a huge difference between the two. God wants to build up the bride. He's saying, get stronger. You can't handle it when somebody gossips about you. What are you going to do when somebody is in direct opposition of your life and your belief system? Well, I'll just quietly disappear into my home and we'll watch online. Sound familiar? There's people that went home and started watching church online during COVID and never came back. But their butts will still be at Target shopping at Starbucks, drinking that latte. <laughs> They'll still be out and about. Well, somebody's at home watching right now getting mad at me. <laughs> there, there's things you can say on the internet you can't say in church. <laughs> And I know they're saying them now. The Lord wants people to understand the slow burn of getting grounded and gaining character development. And that can only happen through patience. There's been a delay in breakthrough on purpose from the Lord. <sighs> Some of y'all are rebuking the devil and the Lord's like, no, 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 I purposely haven't let you have breakthrough yet because I'm trying to build your character to contain it. And we're like, I rebuke the devil. I'm, I'm, I know I'm gonna get, he's like, yeah, I wanna bless you, but not yet. Trust my timing. Again, like I said this morning, your 11th hour is not his 11th hour. 
Maybe you lose your house. And then he gets you into a better one. I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to not pay your bills. <laughs> I know how some of that translates. Someone's like, okay, then I just won't pay my credit card because I'll get a better one. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Let me be real clear to Christians. Christians can be real shady about how they process things sometimes. <laughs> like looking for loopholes. So God, since 2020, has had us in a season of waiting where we're contending for breakthrough, but we're not seeing the amount of breakthrough we want. We're seeing pockets of breakthrough, which are like little bursts of sun coming through the clouds. And the Lord's giving us just enough to say, keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop, keep moving forward. We're seeing such dastardly demonic plans being played out by media and I'm not, listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe lizard people are running the government. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm gonna start some real stuff now. I believe in a round earth. <laughs> I'm not a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> now, if you're a flat earther, email me if you're mad about it. Although to send an email, that signal has to go over the curve, so I don't know how you're going <laughs> to. My wife works for NASA, <laughs> which I got an email saying that I was going to hell, and so was my wife because she worked for NASA. They're like, they're a demonic organization that's covering up that the earth is flat. Okay. <sighs> Let me guess, you're also a sovereign citizen. We'll work that out later. The number 24 translates to priesthood in the Greek. And it's made up of two sets of 12. Now, this is important. 20 is waiting. 24 is priesthood. And I believe what the Lord wants to do in 2024 is to build up the family dynamic, and for men to step back up in their homes to become the priests of their homes. That men are called to take that position. God wants to break off a lazy spirit. He wants to break off an out-of-order spirit in your home. He wants to release your wife from an Amazon spirit. <laughs> Packages. Packages. You, some, somebody said no. I heard somebody's like, no. <laughs> How are you going to survive the Antichrist if you can't handle Amazon? <laughs> I'm teasing you. But men do need to step up as the priest of their homes again and take their rightful place as the head of their home to be responsible for the spirituality of your children and your spouse. Yes, your spouse has their own free will, so do your children, but men were meant to be the priests of their home. How many of you are familiar with the verse where it says, women should be silent in church? How many of you are familiar with that? I'm not tricking you, hang on. <laughs> I felt the estrogen rise in the room. <laughs> that was just like, oh, I'm gonna get my Deborah anointing. <laughs> get my Esther anointing on. <clears throat> the reason that that scripture says that is not because women shouldn't speak in church. It's because at that time in that culture, men were literate and women were not. They're in temple and men sat in a different part of the temple closer to where the rabbi was when they spoke. So the order was the men would get the sermon from the rabbi, then the men would get the privilege of going home with their family and becoming the rabbi of their home and teaching their family what the rabbi taught. It wasn't that women didn't have value. It's that God understood that men should be the priest of their homes and take spiritual authority and become the teacher in their homes as well. It didn't have to do with women having less value. It was that men needed that role to teach their family and be responsible spiritually for their families. 
It's been perverted over the years to mean that women shouldn't be in leadership and women shouldn't talk in church. and That's all garbage. We need women. 2024 is a year of the Esther. It is the year of women rising up, okay? But both have to be in balance. If we're gonna have Esthers, we need men that will be Mordecai's. We need men that will rise up, amen? And it's not easy for dudes to rise up. We are, and I'm about to sound like a big whiny white boy in his 40s, I get that. But we are such a picked on gender right now. And to be honest, it's disgusting. We've been labeled as low intelligent, like these commercials, I don't know if you've seen any of these commercials for like cleaning companies, like cleaning products like Clorox and stuff like that, where the mom will come home and the dad's in a robe and he's just a schlub and he hasn't shaved in like five days and his hair's all wild and he's got a raw turkey that he's, he's got a baby on the counter in a diaper and he's got a raw turkey with turkey juice everywhere and he's dancing with it like this in front of the baby. We're not that dumb. We would eat that turkey. <laughs> Masculinity is under attack. And that's from the enemy. That's not me being like, we need toxic masculinity. That's not what I'm saying either. But we need men to rise up again and stand in their right place and lead their, not boss their wives, but lead their wives through love for Christ. Can I tell you, when you are motivated by the love of Jesus, you will love your wife and you'll lead her well and you'll allow her to be the leader that she's called to be? Now that might rub some people wrong. Allow her? Yes, there's an order to the Bible. There's no room for unhealthy feminism in the Bible. Okay. You can file all complaints to Pastor Robert Hogan at Spring First Church. Dot com. <clears throat> I'll take all your complaints. Now, 24, so we have the perfect balance of waiting. Then we have the priesthood. This stuff's boring. <laughs> when we're talking about prophetic insight, it's like, okay. But it's important to God. It's boring to man because it's not flashy and it doesn't involve angels full of eyeballs and all sorts of crazy things. But I'm just telling you, these things are simple but powerful and they matter to God. And if you are going to go where you're supposed to go in 2024, you're gonna need to harness these things. To be patient and to step into your priesthood. And that's not just for men. Women need to step into their priesthood as well. They need to step up. There is neither black nor white, male nor female, slave nor free. Amen? Amen? Okay. The number 24 is made up of two sets of 12s, right? 12 is symbolic for God's authority. So it appears twice in the number 24, which means a double portion of God's authority and power. And I believe what the Holy Spirit's saying is as you step into these seasons of waiting on the Lord and as you step into the perfect order of walking in your priesthood, that somebody that acknowledges the presence of God, that fans the flames of intimacy and worship with God. It's not just a man stepping into his priesthood or a woman stepping into her leadership and priesthood. It's about you fanning the flames and serving the presence of the Lord. As you do that, the Lord is going to pour out a double portion anointing of his authority and power, and that's what we need. That's the breakthrough. That's the thing right there that is going to publicly embarrass the devil is when you step into a double portion and maybe you don't want it. Maybe you're in such a peace treaty with the world that you don't want it. But I'm just telling you, God wants to give it to you. He wants you to walk in it and step in it. Hallelujah. In 2024, a powerful theme that could resonate with many is the concept of forgiveness as well. As individuals, communities, and nations, we often carry the burden of past hurts and grievances. However, 2024 can be a year of healing and restoration where forgiveness becomes a transformative force. 
inspired by the teachings of Jesus, who forgave even those who crucified him. We can find solace in scripture, such as Matthew 6, 14 through 15, which states, For if we forgive others when they sin against you, your Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive you of your sins. 2024, the way that we are going to heal this political rift that is splitting this country apart is through the power of forgiveness. But I'm just telling you, it won't heal everything because the devil is at work. There are people that will not accept it. You want to heal the racial divide? You want to heal systemic racism? You want to heal hatred? It's through the power of forgiveness, not by subjecting others to the same pain you were subjected to. I will will never gain sympathy for someone of color by being exposed to the same level of racism they were exposed to. You don't, Human beings don't learn that way. I'm not going to relate to somebody based out of being treated poorly how they were treated. They have to choose to forgive. Empathy comes from the Holy Spirit, not from man subjecting man to abuse. Right now, we are in a season of counter racism calling everybody racist, saying everything is racist, saying literally, I, I'm, I'm 47, I'm Gen X. We were the generation that came along and we were like, all bets are off, we love everybody. And now there's a movement that wants to separate everybody based on gender, race, sexual preference. It's because no one feels special, so they've attached themselves to the things that try to make them special. Your color doesn't make you special. Your sexuality doesn't make you special. Jesus makes you special. He's the thing that is the qualifier of value in our lives. I'm not a Norwegian. (laughs) I'm a kingdom citizen of heaven. I'm a brother and a sister to other people that are believers. I'm just telling you, the devil has overplayed his hand. And people in the world are looking for reasons to divide because the enemy is doing the dividing. But so is the Lord. And we're gonna get to that too. We have to be discerning to know where the enemy is causing division and where the Lord is saying, I'm drawing a line in the sand. It's not that Jesus is dividing people, it's that Jesus is drawing a line in the sand and people are choosing what side of the line they're gonna be on. And we're in trouble. We have people on social media that believe whatever they hear. Christians, you are gullible. Somebody can get on there and be like, did you hear that there's now physical evidence that Biden has a devil tail? And people be like, I better send it to nine people and say, if you don't share it, you're going to go to hell. I don't know why Christians are so easily tricked with that stuff. But we have to start discerning what's the Lord and what's the enemy. Church, stop participating in a spirit of division. Start aligning yourself with the word and let Jesus' reputation be your shield. Oh, we're going to get into some stuff now. 2024, we can embrace the idea of being priests in our own homes. The role of a priest is not limited to religious institutions, but extends to the sacred spaces of our everyday lives, which means whether or not you've been called to full-time ministry, you are called to be a priest in your home. Amen? We have the responsibility to create an environment of love, compassion, and spiritual growth within our families and communities. 2024, God's saying, I want to build up your family. I want you to start looking each other in the eyes again. Start making eye contact. Put this down. And start looking at each other. Start engaging with one another. Stop letting your phone raise your children. Start playing board games. 
I'm getting old school. You know what I did the other day with my daughter? I busted out my OG Nintendo. And I was, <laughs> I was like, hey, let's take a break from all this weird Japanime stuff you're into right now. And let's just play a game together. So we got on there, we played Super Mario Brothers 3. I taught her the glory of getting the raccoon suit. And we had fun, we laughed, we played, we talked, we looked at each other in the face. God wants to restore the, the fires of intimacy in your family, to rebuild connection. You're gonna have to fight for it though. In 1 Peter 2, 9, it is written, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into, the, into his wonderful light. Think about that. Being the priest of your home is not just having a biblical backbone in your home. It's about you evangelizing and reaching the lost through your life, you living the gospel. I'm telling you right now, if you are a believer and you're in this room or you're watching online and you claim that you are a believer, you are hereby ordained in the name of Jesus to minister and spread the gospel. You're called to do it. It's your birthright. You don't get a pass because you're uncomfortable or you're paying someone else to do it. You're called to do it. Well, thank you, Jesus. 2024 can be a year of operating under a double portion of God's authority. This concept stems from the story of the prophet Elijah passing on his mantle to Elisha, who then received a double portion of his spiritual authority. In 2 Kings 2.9, it talks about it. Elisha asked Elijah, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. This double portion represents an increased measure of God's power and authority to accomplish his purposes. So you will have a double portion of God's authority to do what you're called to do. To work harder, to love better. Well, 2024 is a year where we let go of grudges. Look, Christians are real good at holding grudges. <laughs> we say things like, well, I, I forgive. Did you hear what brother so-and-so did to me? Oh, don't worry, I've forgiven him. But this is what he did. <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure you forgave? <laughs> like, I'm not sure. It doesn't seem like you did because it's still... We've come to a place in the body of Christ where we have fallen for the trap that the enemy set in the world, and that's that trauma would become our identity. Let me encourage you in something. Baby, you are not your trauma. You are not the worst thing that happened to you. You will not spend the rest of your life being a victim of molestation. You will not spend the rest of your life being a victim of a sickness or the victim of growing up in poverty. Do not let trauma define you. Let Jesus define you. We are in the offended Olympics where we, where we ascribe value based on the hard things we've been through. The hard things you've been through do not make you valuable or important. Jesus brings value. And we are stuck in this place where people are going, well, this is how I identify because of all the stuff that's happened to me. Jesus had all the reason in the world to play that card and did not. He's in the garden sweating blood. He's been ridiculed, excommunicated, abandoned by his friends. He could have easily been like, I'm not dying for these fools. These guys aren't fun to be around. <laughs> They're not faithful. There's all these reasons Jesus could have chosen to not go to the cross, yet we're denying our cross and picking up the cross of trauma. We're saying, I'm these things that happened to me. These are my trigger warnings. These are the no-go zones. How? 
how are we going to handle the devil? We can't handle Santa. <laughs> He's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. We can't handle Santa. We can't even measure up to that. We can't handle Jesus. Jesus is after our hearts. He's after your heart. He wants you to get better, to get healthier, to stand up, to, to take a stand, to know who you are in him, to know who he is in you. This is what he's after. He's after intimacy, and he's trying to get rid of all the noise, and he's going to tear down all the clanging cymbals until you are surrounded by rubble so he can finally talk to you. He's going to say, where's all your distractions? Where's all your things? Some of you are going to get to know Jesus for the first time in a long time if an EMP goes off. You won't have Netflix. You won't have TikTok. You've become so disassociated from human contact and conversation. We've become apathetic because we've allowed things to replace relationship. The Lord is a jealous God, and he wants you, and he wants nothing in the way. 2024 is about forgiveness, letting go of grudges, healing broken relationships. 2024 is about true forgiveness and true restoration. In 2024, we're going to start seeing the Lord do something that we've never seen, and it's not that he's never done it. It's just we're not familiar with it in the charismatic church, and that's called restoration. Where failed ministers, failed clergy, failed church members are going to come back. They're going to come back repenting, changed, and different. And we're going to see a massive healing take place where there was broken relationships where there were stones thrown before, the Lord's going to remove all signs of damage from that. And we're gonna get laid in front of us an opportunity. Do you receive them back or do you reject them? Can I tell you, you're better to err on the side of grace because you're sowing up grace for yourself one day. God's going to be restoring. God's going to be healing broken relationships and families. Prodigal children in 2024, there is going to be a siren that's going to go off in the supernatural, and prodigals are going to return home in 2024. Amen. They're going to grow up and grow out. They're going to begin to hear the love songs of God over their lives. And the Father will break the Pied Piper spirit that's been singing them away. It's the year where the prodigal becomes Pinocchio. Where the Lord rescues them from the island. Where they've, been, where they've become a distorted image of what they were called to be. And the Lord restores them back to who they're called to be. Amen? Amen. Hearts of wood will be turned into hearts of flesh and they'll return home. It's a year where our homes become sacred spaces of love and acceptance, amen? Your home is going to become a temple. So pay attention on what you have in your temple. Allow no mixture in the foundation of your temple. The Lord's not looking for perfection. He's not looking for you to follow rules instead of relationship. But what he is asking us to do is remove impurity from our lives in our homes. There are areas of compromise where we have allowed the enemy to have a foothold. And it seems benign. It seems harmless. But it is not. 
It is a foothold that we've been blind to. We have made exceptions for things to allow into our house that should not be there. I'm putting this into practice myself. Where I'm like, okay, this movie's not really that bad. There's just some stuff in it that's a little rough. And the Lord's like, you have no room right now for mixture. What I'm doing in you, my, my dad gave me this example. I still remember this from right after I came back to the Lord. I was still going through this phase of like, well, there's, it's okay to have a little bit of compromise because I'm a human after all. I gotta have fun. I can't just be a <laughs> uptight Christian my whole life. My dad's like, yeah, you can still have fun and do holy things. And I'm like, that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> My dad's like, Luke, if I took th three glasses of orange juice, right, fill them to the brim right in front of you, and I told you I had an eyedropper full of urine and just one tiny squeeze of this eyedropper is in one of those cups. <laughs> Would you want to drink any of them? I'm like, nah. I don't want to drink pee. My dad's like, so why would you even risk it? Why would you risk it with any of it? I'm like, oh, yeah. And the Lord's like, this, look, there's just a moment of brief nudity. I'm telling you, the devil moves in sophistication through subtleties. These little things that we allow ourselves. I'm not telling you to be religious or to be the religious police for other people. Mind your business. We need to be in each other's lives, not each other's business. But saying that, you still have an obligation to clean house. Because your home is your temple and it's becoming your sacred place. And you're going to need a place that looks different than the world where the enemy has no bugs planted to hear you. Well, amen. We're going to move on to speaking about the church of the United States. I don't have a word for the global church. I have a word for the church of the United States. And it's something that we've already been seeing. Not many have addressed for fear of backlash. But baby, I don't care. I'm going after it. I just, I don't care. I got nothing to lose. What am I going to lose? Christian celebrityism? Okay, cool. I'd be happy to lose any of that that I have, which isn't much. I don't, as the kids say, I don't have much riz. Google it. It's the Lord's desire to send an awakening to the Church of America. It is God's desire to send an awakening, and he wants to send it to the broader church of America, and the way he wants to send it is through Gen Z. The Lord wants to send an awakening through Gen Z, and the devil has known this since the birth and the impartation and the demarcation of Gen Z. The enemy has known this, and so the enemy sent a woke movement to a generation that was called for awakening. The church was called to be awakened. Every major revival in history was a youth revival. Not unto themselves, they were backed by mature believers in the body of Christ that helped the movement go forward. But God wants to send an awakening to the church because what's happening is the church is losing her power and she's getting bored and the next generation doesn't want any part of it. Because they see the lack of power, the rules and the boredom and they want something that matters something that has impact. And so what the devil has done is he has raised up a group of woke preachers in America that are destroying the body of Christ. They are creating an anti-bride. It's not the true bride, and it's going to become one of the natural enemies of the true bride in America. There is a false kingdom being erected and being established by people that are false apostles, false preachers, false prophets, false teachers, but people are not discerning enough because their ears are tickled by the words they say. There is a church in Atlanta, I don't know if you saw this on the news, what they did on New Year's Eve, 
they opened their church and made it a nightclub for New Year's Eve. They played secular music that's saying F this, F that, all the secular, there, there's video of people bumping and grinding on each other in the sanctuary. And the pastor comes out and goes, well, we had 150 people saved that night. And he goes, so if you can't out soul win me, don't talk against me. First of all, that's a lie from the pit of hell. They weren't saved to Jesus. I don't know what they were saved to, but it wasn't Jesus. There's a problem in the pulpits in America where there's a generation that has not experienced the power. There's a falsehood of leaders that have been raised up that have not experienced the power of Christ. They've only experienced the disappointment of church culture, so now they're preaching another message. They're offering another Christ and another church movement, but it's not the true bride. What these woke preachers are doing is they're trying to make Jesus relatable to the world. We're not called to make Jesus relatable to the world. The world has to have its mindset changed to be relatable to Jesus. We don't change him to make the world feel comfortable. Jesus doesn't make the world feel comfortable. And if you're preaching a gospel that makes the world feel comfortable, that's not grace. That's blasphemy. Jesus called us out of our comfort. I didn't come from drug addiction, working for a drug dealer for seven years, debt collection for a drug dealer, lost, drug addicted, sleeping around, hopeless. I didn't come out of that lifestyle because a church made me feel comfortable in my sin. I came out of it because I had an encounter with the one true holy living God that was radically different than the darkness I was living in. And then when I showed up at church... They didn't say, oh, that's okay. You can still keep doing that. They said, baby, if you love Jesus, you got to come out of this stuff. You, you can't live with your girlfriend. You can't keep having premarital sex. You can't keep doing this. You can't keep getting trashed on the weekends. You can't keep smoking pot and getting high. You just can't do it. It's not good. And we've become so petrified to call things what they are because we're afraid we'll lose them. They're not yours anyways. You're afraid of losing something that doesn't belong to you? Seems a bit odd. Jesus is trying to break through this agenda and he needs, Jesus doesn't need our help. He needs us to step up to where we're called to be. We're called to be a city of lights on the side of a hill, amen? The world cannot relate to Jesus. The world must be transformed to follow Jesus. Beware the mimicking spirit of the enemy. Hear this word. This is a warning to the body of Christ. Everyone online, hear this word. Everybody in this room, beware the mimicking spirit. It mimics the move of God. It mimics the prophetic. It mimics the supernatural. It mimics preaching, but it, it's void of the spirit of God. It's preaching another gospel that gives you a way around the cross, not through it. I'm seeing it now in the prophetic. Can I just tell you it's heartbreaking? There's a, there's a church in Houston right now that has a false prophet leading it that's destroying other churches in Houston and nobody knows about it but because the individual is famous people in the city and abroad are embracing it they don't know he's a he's a false prophet that's never had an accurate word not once he has sent out people to other churches to give false prophetic words to their leaders about coming to their church to serve this man and they're fooled and they go and they start serving him. And I've been there, I've seen it, I've watched it walk, walk out in front of me. I've seen it happen. So I'm speaking as someone who has seen it and I'm calling it out. I'm not naming names because the Lord knows. And I'm warning you, you cannot believe everything that comes out and claims to be prophetic. You cannot believe every preacher that stands before you and says that they're a man or a woman of God. 
If you believe everything because you have itching ears, you will fall for everything. For too long, the church has lost her discernment and we've accepted things because they have a large following, but a large following can be purchased. I can go and spend $200,000 on social media and by the end of 2024, I can be the leading prophetic voice globally. At least people would think that because they see my following on social media, then I get invited to all the big conferences. Now I'm the face of it. We've started accepting people because of their following, but not because of their fruit. And I've had it because there is a true, authentic bride. There are true, authentic prophets. There are true, authentic apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists that are the real deal, and they're getting covered up because Christians are falling for clickbait. We have got to wake up or you'll be led astray. Look at the fruit. Don't just go, oh, famous, like it, click, I'm on it. The devil is not going to destroy the supernatural movement through Southern Baptists. The devil's not going to raise up an army of atheists to shut down the prophetic. You know what the devil's doing? He's raising up false prophetic voices and sending them out to create muddy waters. That's how he's going to destroy it. Not by saying it's not real, but by sending others out there that destroy lives to the point where the church says, we don't even want to deal with it anymore because it's destroyed lives. We have denominations that believe that. Well, we don't touch the prophetic because we've seen it harm people. We need to get discerning so we're not fooled because the Antichrist is coming and there's false prophets in the world that will perform miracles and because you see it, you will believe it and you'll say, that's the Lord when it's void of the Lord. You don't think the devil can heal people? He put the infirmity on them. He can remove it and then you're tricked. You don't, people go, well, demons can't prophesy. You want to make a bet? They can see into a spiritual world that you're not seeing in. Demons can guess your future based off the hidden agreements you have with darkness. So they can prophesy things over you too that you'll be like, oh, wow, that must be the Lord. I, I, I once heard a story of a young man prophesying over a woman. She left her husband because of the word he gave her. For an underage girl, It sounds insane, doesn't it? But yet this person was a solid leader for years and was eventually fooled because his ears were tickling and the enemy knew just how to scratch it. Beware the mimicking spirit of the enemy. It will mimic supernatural things. Some call it a kundalini spirit where it mimics the laughter of the Holy Spirit or being touched by the Holy Spirit in a moment, the enemy has a plan of attack. 2024 is the year that the church stands up and we put on our war paint. This is the year we throw the towel down on the earth and say, enough. You've taken from me. You've taken from my kids. You've taken from my government. You've taken from my job. You've taken from my heart. Enough. You know what the enemy's afraid of? You. He's afraid you'll wake up. He's afraid you'll unplug from the matrix and you'll see what he's doing. The enemy is attacking the supernatural movement and I'm just telling you, don't be persuaded by what you see. Be persuaded by what you discern. Be persuaded by the fruit. I visited the church where this false prophet's at. It seats several thousand people and the place was packed. People desperate, dying to be called out and given a word. The things that were said from the pulpit were so 
They were so sacrilegious. My wife and I sat there in disbelief, astounded that anyone would listen to this. They came and got us. We sat in the back of the room. I was trying to hide. I even wore long sleeves so they wouldn't see my tattoos. They came back and got me. He would like you to come sit up with him. No, thank you. We're okay. We just want to sit back here. Luke, please come up there. No, thank you. So they go away and they come back and they said, the prophet will be very angry and, and offended if you don't come. My wife's like, babe, just let's go up there. We'll just dart out of service as soon as it's done. And I was like, all right. So I get up there and I start looking to my left and right and I'm seated next to good, solid leaders from other churches that were robbed from those churches and fell for the trap. Anytime this prophet turned his head or even adjusted or scratched, there's three people leaning in. Do you need anything? Do you, can we get you anything? They became slaves serving a personality. Not once has his prophetic words been right, yet entire people fall for it, and he's speaking at conferences all over the world. And it's not just him. It's more than him. I've sat in cars with people claiming to be religious leaders that have literally purchased salvations at conferences. There's a man that did a crusade in the Middle East from San Diego. He brought me in to preach, and he made a phone call in the car. It was on speakerphone, and because I'm not famous, I'm no threat. And I heard him talking to this guy that was planning his revival outreach in the Middle East, and the guy's like, okay, my friend, for $80,000, I can promise you 40,000 first-time salvations. I can promise you that there'll be 15,000 people that wave at the cameras to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that will fake it. That none of them were saved. None of them were delivered or changed, but they were willing to pay money to portray it on God TV or Daystar or any Christian media that was willing to go there and look at it. And they believed it. The world believed it. When I threatened him about coming out about it, he said, Luke, with one phone call, I can destroy your entire ministry and everyone will believe me because I'm well known and you're not. And yet hundreds of thousands of believers go and attended it and loved it and wanted to be a part of it. Even big speakers went and put their stamp of approval on it because it paid well. But the Lord is over it. The Lord's saying, okay, I can't trust Eli. I'm gonna raise up some Samuels. That's what the Lord's wanting to do. There is going to be a grassroots church revolution in the body of Christ in America where the everyday lay person in the body of Christ will have to fill holes that are there because of others that have fallen for the enemy's plan. And we need you. I need you. The Lord wants you to fall into your position in the body of Christ. I know this is heavy. I'm the dude that jokes all the time. So this isn't easy for me to deliver a word that's critical like this, but there is hope. That's why I'm talking about it because the Lord is our hope. And if you can grab a hold of the heritage of his hope, we have a chance. But I'm telling you, 2024 is a year of open doors. There will be great things to come in 2024, but we need to know the pitfalls too so we can get through the door. You don't want to fall through the trap door right in front of your door of destiny. That's why the Lord's making us aware now. Unfortunately, these woke preachers have made a God in their own image, which is no God at all. It's a God of perversion. It's a God of their own intellect. This is no God at all. It will lead many to, sol to false salvations. And so the church is going to have to step in and help some people that think they're saved. You ever met anybody that thinks they're saved? Then you start talking to them and you're like, oh, baby. You're not saved, honey, but we, will, we can get you there. There's going to come a point where the stench will fill God's nostrils and there'll be a road to Damascus experience where many will get knocked off their high horses. Even some, even some of these woke preachers 
will get slain by the Lord and awaken out of their slumber. And they will confess what they've done. We've seen a down payment of this. How many of you know who Benny Hinn is? Benny Hinn got on TV in 2023 and repented for the way he preached about money. He said, I was greedy, I was misguided, and I preached the Almost nobody covered it because <laughs> it didn't sell well for his conferences. But he got up there and he was like, look, I have misappropriated money and I've said the wrong things and I, I gave the wrong image of God and how he feels about money. Please forgive me. Can I just tell you, I gained a lot of respect for him that day that he was willing to come out and say that. These woke preachers are gonna muddy the bloodline of the church and the world will, the U.S. government will back the false bride because she's willing to take it all and to not preach the gospel and to say everyone's okay and everyone can do what they want and the world will embrace that as the true church and then you'll get people going to these large-scale churches, these large-scale events that are not worshiping God at all. Stay faithful. When you see them growing, stay faithful. When you feel like you're not growing at the same rate, stay faithful. God has a plan. Churches that are the true bride are going to become the fallout shelter for the woke. They're gonna become the place where they run to and go, hey, uh, I have all the fruit of wickedness in my life and I'm hopeless, I'm suicidal, I'm depressed, I need help. Awesome, we become the hospital. We have a purpose to serve, amen? There's preachers who have thrown down their own callings for the purpose of financial prosperity outside of God's blessing. Can I tell you, it's okay for a minister to have resource, but not at the cost of their integrity. There'll be unscrupulous woke preachers that are not workers in the way that we are. They are false preachers, false apostles, false prophets. They are angry at the rules that exist inside a relationship with Jesus. And so they want to tear down all love-motivated obedience for the purpose of being allowed to sin. All you have to do is spend 10 minutes on Google looking up celebrity pastors to see the ways that they have fallen and failed because they became influenced by the celebrity they were in the life of and not by the celebrity of Jesus. Justin Bieber was under a pastor who became so swayed by the celebrity status of Justin Bieber, now there's photos of him on Google, shirtless, trashed in a bar with Justin Bieber. Still has one of the fastest growing churches in the U.S., can you see that the enemy is erecting a church that looks like him and not like Jesus? So we don't, the 2024 is also the year of churches ending, ending their inner bickering. Stop fighting with each other. We have a real enemy out there and it's not your, it's not the person sitting in the seat next to you. It's the enemy out there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hang on during the shaking because the Lord is gonna shake everything we're comfortable with. He's doing it now. Hang on during the shaking. There will be political unrest. There'll be political shaking. Hang on. Don't be persuaded by the news media. Don't be persuaded by what you read on social media. Be persuaded by what you know to be true about God. But there will be unrest. I'm not a doomsday prophet. You guys know me. I've been coming here for years. I am not a doomsday prophet, but I am telling you that it's gonna get rough. There's gonna be good in it too, which we're getting to, but there's gonna be some rough stuff. 2024 will be the year, now more than ever, that the church will become a city of lights on the side of a hill. 
that we will shine the marvelous light of Christ Jesus, that people will run to the church because of the light that we are shining from our faces, from our pulpits, and from the way we live our lives. We are a city of lights set on the side of a hill. 2024 is about us shining a bright light. 2024 is the year of the open door, and that means open door of opportunity. That means open door of promotion, open door of finances. The Lord is opening up in 2024 an entrepreneurial ease of access. That might sound weird because it's like, well, the economy's in the toilet. <laughs> There's gonna be a shift that takes place in 2024. Mark my words, the end of February, beginning of March, there is going to be a financial turnaround in this country. It's gonna start and we're going to see it in real estate first. I'm telling you, the end of February and start, if you have been on the fence, those of you watching online or those of you in the room, if you have been on the fence at all about getting into real estate, 2024, the end of February, beginning of March is the time to step into it. We are going to see an economic turnaround in the housing market and we will not have the inventory to match the need. We will need inventory because it will cause people to fight over the same property. You're going to need more inventory. I'm just telling you, if you're a person that's like, well, I've been wondering about getting my license to do real estate, or I've been wondering about getting into developing real estate, end of February, beginning of March, you're going to start to see a turnaround in housing and in the economy related to housing. Well, amen. <clears throat> Hang on. <laughs> because the Lord's saying, I'm promising you, you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. The Lord says, Hang on. Even though there may be shaking, do not be moved. They do something in wrestling. You know, I'm a huge fan of wrestling. They do something in wrestling called the no sell. Now, the no sell is when somebody does a big move on you, like a body slam or the DDT or the F5 if you're Brock Lesnar, and you just get up like nothing happened. They hate it in wrestling. <laughs> Hulk Hogan used to do it when people would hit him or hurt him and he'd start, <laughs> remember that? Right? People would start beating Hulk Hogan and he'd start getting up and shaking me like, <laughs> You know, getting all red faced and I am a real start, right? And you throw him into the ropes and drop the big leg on him. The Lord's telling you, no sell it. When the enemy strikes, when he tries to take the wind out of your sails, stone faced, no sell it. Don't be shaken, don't be moved. Remember, every attack from the enemy is another opportunity to publicly shame the devil. Do not be moved. Be obedient. Stand still. We like that quote where it says, right? It's like a storm coming. I don't know the whole quote, but they're like, I am the storm, right? You know that quote? Like every Christian on the planet had that on their status in a meme or something like that, <laughs> like a year and a half ago. They're like, I am the storm devil. The storm whispered, or the, the devil whispered in my ear, the storm's coming, and I told him, I am the storm. Okay. <laughs> the same people that complain about their steak not being cooked well enough at a restaurant. <laughs> like, I am the storm. Could you cook this a bit more? Like, I'm just saying, they don't measure up necessarily. <laughs> but you have a chance to be the storm in 2024 to say, no, I will be faithful. I will not be moved by this. I will not be moved from my space. In First Nations Native American culture, there was a tribe, when they fought in battle, they had a rope around their waist, and on the end of that rope, they had a spike. And when they were battling, they would throw the spike with a little flag on it into the ground, and they could only move on this string around. And the purpose was, I may die or I may live, but I'm gonna stand my ground. And the Lord's telling us in 2024, 
throw your flag into the earth. Claim where your territory is and stand your ground. Do not be moved. The economy will begin to heal. If you've considered, like I said, stepping into real estate, that's the time to do it. The market will need more inventory because rates will go down. Product will be needed. If you've thought about getting into construction or any of those things in the housing, step into it. I'm giving you free <laughs> advice. I have Fortune 500 companies that pay me to come in and do this. And I'm telling you right now, I'm giving it to you. I, I'm not involved. I don't have a real estate program to sell you. <laughs> Let me make that. I guess I should say that first. Like, I'm not in real estate. So if any of you are like, let's hear the pitch. I'm not in real estate. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the Lord has showed me. Politics. Right now, the number one question I'm getting in my email, can you guess what it is? Thank you. Is Trump gonna be president? Thank you. That's. <laughs> he said he is president. <laughs> <laughs> people often ask me they're like when you know so it's gonna be Trump right the Lord never shows me that stuff he never shows me who's gonna be president he can show me certain things like shenanigans attempts that's why we need to stand firm because we need to be sober minded Otherwise, we will react instead of respond. <clears throat> so be well grounded. There's gonna be some underhanded stuff. But this is the year of the open door, which is not just open opportunity, but it's open closet doors. <laughs> it's exposure of hidden things. We've already seen it in a major ministry. I prophesied in 2022 about what would take place in 2023 and I literally named the ministry that would fall from this pulpit. We knew it was coming. Not because we had any insight from man but the Lord said, this is what's gonna happen. We need to know how to respond. Amen? Amen? Election season will be intense and it will require cooler heads to prevail. Do not believe every post. Okay, don't believe every post don't believe everything you see on TikTok. People will willfully lie, and they're willfully lying now. I've seen videos where people are like, oh, did you hear that they found out Trump is actually related to Hitler? <laughs> no, he's not. But just some dumb 19-year-old on TikTok said it that had a lot of followers, and people are like, I knew it. I knew that that was true. I, I knew it the whole time. I even said it. <laughs> we can't believe everything we hear. This is, what's led, this is what's led us into some trouble is people will get online with a snarky know-it-all attitude and they'll say something and people will go, yeah, that's true. No, it's not. There's a guy that got on TikTok and he's got like 2 million followers. And he's like, did you know that Jesus was not kosher, that he was halal? 
that he was Palestinian and was never a Jew, that Jesus was really a Muslim. Halal didn't exist when Jesus was around. <laughs> Just so y'all know, historically, not a thing. But there's hundreds of thousands of comments on this video that are like, I knew it. Like, Jesus would be so pro-Palestinian. And it's like, what? You're just dumb. You're just saying dumb stuff. Just making stuff. I'm just gonna start an account like that. And I'm gonna just start saying stuff. Did you know turtles have six legs? The, re the rest are hidden in their shell. Like, just, just stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That, he said, I knew it. <laughs> we are living in the information age, but it's not all good information. People are nuts, and they're putting crazy things on the internet. There'll be shenanigans going on during the election. It will be intense. But closet doors will be opened because the Lord is passing judgment in 2024. People will be brought to task. Things that have been sowed in prayer are gonna be reaped in 2024. There's things we've been contending for in 2024 for financial breakthrough, for prosperity, for health, for transparency in our government. There's gonna be things that God judges on in 2024 that will come to light and will come forth and it'll be for our betterment. Thank you, Jesus. When I asked the Lord, I said, what's, so what's, like, what's election time gonna look like? And he played me a song. You wanna know what song the Lord played me? This is the song the Lord played me when I said, what are, what's it gonna be like during election time? <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. Gonna be a circus. Gonna be a circus. <laughs> There'll be underhanded attempts. Do not be surprised when darkness shows itself. And remember, it's being shown for a purpose. Darkness will play its hand boldly for all to see, and we'll have a choice. Stand with kingdom principles. You know, it's interesting. I saw this on the news that um, Texas was talking about seceding. There's a secede movement. Have you all seen that? I was like, that's interesting. I thought that was an interesting news article. It's an interesting story. Um, so there's going to be things that go down, and you're going to need to have cooler heads to prevail. Don't buy into all the garbage. Don't feed it. Don't promote it. Don't share it. Don't feed into it at all. The entire time that Trump was president was annoying. <laughs> Some of you are like, wait, what do you mean? That's how politically motivated you are right now. <laughs> we need to lose that. The reason I'm saying it's annoying is not because of Trump, but it's because of the constant news coverage of everything. They're like, Trump farted on a Tuesday, so he's not fit to be president. I knew it. <laughs> Remember when he, like, he went up some stairs one time slowly, and the, the New York Times had this big, bold print on it and said, is Trump afraid of stairs? I was like... What? This is like a sixth grade newspaper. <laughs> like they were, word on the street is Donald Trump swallows his bubble gum. So watch out. So there's gonna be temptation to feed into the political spirit. Do not feed into it. Stand for what's right. It's okay to make your opinion known. Don't be ugly. Don't be ugly. Remember, Democrats are image bearers. Republicans are image bearers. 
I'm saying this as somebody who was raised in a Republican home where my dad's like, you can't be a Christian and be a Democrat. And I was like, okay. And then I married into a Filipino family that's like, you can't be a Christian and be a Republican. And I was like, uh oh. <laughs> this is going to make holidays interesting. They have CNN on constantly all night long when we're over there. And I'm like, okay. They're like, what do you guys believe? And I was like, we played the fifth. <laughs> Who'd you vote for? That's private. <laughs> I'm a, they're like, that means Trump. <laughs> I was like, oh, mind your business. But we've got to get to a place where we can love people on both sides of the aisle. What would happen to the corruption of the swamp if people got together? Just some food for thought. There's a political party worth voting for. It's Jesus. Vote the Bible, homie. I can't stress that enough. I'm not a political person, but I'm just telling you, there is a right way to vote. And it's what the principles of God are, what Jesus would agree with. Can I tell you that there's no perfect solution on earth? That's why we need Jesus to come back. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are hating me. Some of you are like, Going from hating to liking to hate. They're like, ooh, I like that he said that. Ooh, I don't like that he said that. I like, uh, I like that part. I don't like that part. Well, it's a buffet. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. Get your fill. So there's great resource coming back to the body of Christ. The Lord said, I'm going to shake the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous. Now, there's a duality to that prophecy for 2024. Shaking the wealth of the wicked into the hands of the righteous means wicked business people, uh, drug dealers, prostitutes, uh, just wicked people that are lost getting saved and bringing their resources into the house of God. But also, the wicked are the wealth. There's going to be souls one. That's the wealth. And they're going to bring resource with them. The Lord's going to fund some things that have been delayed. We've found ourselves in seasons of delay in the now and the not yet. And the Lord says 2024 is about pushing you through the veil. 2024, the Lord's judging and he's passing sentencing to say, look, this is my decree. I'm pushing you through the veil. The Lord's saying in 2024, there's some delayed justice in the house, in your house. There's things you've been contending for that the enemy took from you that he rightfully owes you for. And the Lord's saying, in 2024, I'm slamming the gavel down and I'm paying some of those things forward into your life. There's family you're owed. There's justice you're owed for being ripped off, stolen from. Not all the payback is monetary. We're just not ready yet. I mean, it's gonna be awesome. I'm just telling y'all, I am filled with excitement about 2024. I know we addressed all these heavy things, but we're addressing the heavy things so that you would not be found unprepared or unaware. But there is so much good. There is so much healing that is gonna take place. And I'm telling you, it's not gonna come from church media, from Christian media. It's not gonna come from a political party. It's gonna be a grassroots movement of forgiveness and healing that's gonna sweep across America. And there will be a healing of race relations that's gonna begin in 2024 where the everyday person is gonna say, I don't need a political party to tell me what to do. I don't need uh, my school professors to tell me what to do. I don't need TikTok to tell me what to do. You're showing me kindness. I'm gonna choose to let go of my trauma and we're gonna heal each other in 2024. That's part of what's gonna take place. People are gonna stop following narratives and start believing what their eyes see in front of them, not what they perceive on the internet. There's literally, like, I don't know if we know the level of deception. I prophesied about this in 2018 about AI and some of the dangers that are going to come with AI. Did you know that there's literally, this is not an AI issue, but this is a fake issue. On TikTok and on social media platforms, there's literally accounts that make up fake drama 
to promote on their TikTok to get more clicks, to get more likes, to get more money. They literally make a sound stage and make it look like an airplane, and it's not an airplane, but they make it look like one. Have, have any of you seen this? You're right? It's, it's called conflict porn. It's not real. It's actors pretending that they're fighting over race, racial things, and like a woman that was, that was black was yelling at this lady because she said the N-word. None of it was real. They were actors that were on a sound stage. And people were like, this is why white people suck. And it's like, it's not real. And people are looking at it going, wow, what a messed up world we live in. It's not real. It's people getting money off of you clicking on it and watch. And the more you comment, the more you click on it, the more you watch it, the more they get. So they've learned to sell conflict because it's got monetary value. Don't believe everything. Spring First Church. Let's get down home, baby. Let's make it direct. Spring First Church, Galatians 6, 9. I would like the Hogan clan to come up here and just stand up here. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you that are in the room, just extend a hand out in agreement. If I could have some of the leadership or some of the prayer staff come up and just stand behind them to support, that would be awesome. I have a good word of encouragement for y'all. I saw how 2023 ended and how 2024 began. And in a dream, I saw you running as a team in 2023. And I saw right at the finish line, it felt like you hit a wall. But you broke through into 2024. And this is the verse that I felt the Lord share for you was Galatians 6, 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. This is what the Lord has spoken over spring first. All your hard work, all your sacrifice is not for naught. It's for a reason. And the Lord said, I did not bring you through the valley of the shadow of death to leave you in the valley. But I've brought, I'm bringing you up the other side of this valley. And the Lord says, in 2024, this is where I rebrand the movement. This is where I rebrand the church and what it's doing. The Lord said, Psalm 24 is your promise. I'm gonna read Psalm 24. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go to Psalm 24. It's on the screen behind me. Okay, my phone's working now. <clears throat> psalm 24 is a psalm of David, and it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Starting in verse three, this is y'all. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, of the God of Jacob, Selah. This is what the Lord said about spring first. 
You are the church of pure hands. The Lord has sifted your life and you have not been found wanting, but you have been found faithful. You have been found of pure hands and a clean heart. And because of that, you are going to step into the higher places. Those with pure hands get to go up higher. You're going up higher. You have held the standard of purity, and because of that, you will go higher. Verse 7 is your reward for staying faithful. When the king enters the room, people will run to the presence. Get ready, because 2024 is a payout year for spring first. 2024 is your payout year where the Lord said, look, you have sowed in tears. You have sowed in hope, even fighting the bonds of disappointment. The enemy trying to bring disappointment to your door. Literally, the enemy's saying, oh, it's not what you thought. It's not, it's not going like you thought. It's not going as you had hoped. You had hoped for so much more. When is the so much more gonna happen? And the Lord says, you stayed steadfast. You have pure hands, clean hands, pure heart. And because of that, the Lord said, you will ascend the hill and you are taking all of spring first with you. This is what the Lord says. This church has got to get ready. I've prophesied something similar to this in years past about what God has in store. And all these years have been a test and you remained pure. You didn't give up. You could have done anything else. You could have done anything else and been successful. David, you could have done anything else and been more successful financially than you are in what you're doing here. But you chose this. And because you chose rightly, the Lord will guide you the rest of your days and your family shall never be in want. You will never starve. You will never look at a situation and go, God, we can't go through it. You will go through it and he will take you through it and he will provide the entire way because you chose a way that was not selfish. You chose purity to not compromise. You even lost people that were supposed to run with you because you refused to compromise. The Lord is getting ready to take you through new heights in 2024, starting in 2024. And he's taking your whole family with you. Every one of your offspring and everyone you touch will be blessed, highly favored, and advanced in anything they do. Anything they put their hand to, they will prosper in it because of your faithfulness. But the Lord is speaking directly over spring, saying, this is the year of the payout. This is the year where all the suffering, all the rough stuff that you don't know, that you online don't know, this is where he pays it out. This is the year he's going to start paying it out. And so I just want the rest of you just extend your hands and we're gonna pray. Father, I thank you that 2024 is a Galatians 6, 9 year for spring first. That they will reap a harvest if they do not give up and they will not give up. Lord, I thank you for the Psalm 24 anointing that is on their lives, that they remained pure when they could have soiled their hands. They remained pure. When they could have gotten away with doing the wrong thing behind closed doors, they remained pure. When they could have launched attacks back at those that attacked them, they stayed pure. Father, and because they stayed pure, this is the year of the payout where they're going to higher levels, where they get to ascend the hill of the Lord. Father, I thank you that this is a house of promise. Father, I pray that on this property that your angels would sound the alarm and that salvation would rise up from the ground. Father, that there would literally be a magnetism that draws people to spring first. Lord, I thank you that spring first, best days are not behind them. 
Father, that this place has been transformed into a birthing unit. Father, that this place will be transformed. Lord, that they have room to grow, that they have room for the birthing unit, Lord, that there's new things that are going to be established, Father, that they will not grow weary in doing good, but they will stay steadfast. In the name of Jesus, I pray they would not give up hope, that they would keep running forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. You can clap for Jesus. It's okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God has big things planned in 2024. Every year we've released a prophetic word for that year. And I'm happy to say that not one word is returned void every year that we release a word. We've seen the Lord be faithful and come through on those who walk out their part. I hope you caught that last part. On those who participated in the word, we have testimony after testimony of God breaking through and doing the very thing he promised. This is what I want to do. If you're in the room and you feel like you have an entrepreneurial anointing on your life, stand up right where you're at. If you feel like you've got an entrepreneurial, like maybe to start a business, maybe you already have a business, I want to pray for you specifically. All right, all of you that are seated, I want you just to extend your hands towards those that are standing. Those of you that are standing, close your eyes. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for everyone that's standing, Lord. I pray that this would be a year of unprecedented strategy. Lord, I pray for that entrepreneurial anointing to rest on them. Father, that you would fill their hand with provision, resource, and relationship. Lord, that they would do the right thing with the money that you're going to deposit into their hand, that they would pass the character test. Lord, I pray for the Joseph anointing to rest on them, that everything they touch would prosper, that everything they touch would have favor. Lord, I pray for an Exodus 31 anointing, that they would see that it is the Spirit of God that gives all ability to work in bronze, gold, and silver, to craft artistic designs, to do all the things that you've called them to do. Father, I pray for Proverbs uh, 18, I believe it is, Lord, where it says, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Lord, that you would give them new ideas, fresh ideas, new business strategies, new partnerships, new funding, new favor. Lord, I pray that above all that, as they step into their entrepreneurial anointing, Father, that their reputation as an employer would be blessed. That their employees would say that this is a man or a woman of God. Lord, that reputations would be healed, Father. Lord, I pray for strategy to be deposited in their hearts. Lord, for areas where they've lost this year financially, Father, I pray that they would let go of the fear in the name of Jesus. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that they would receive sevenfold what's been stolen from them. Lord, if there's been any theft from the enemy in their business, we say that not only does he have to repay what he stole, but they also get the whole inhabitants of his house. Lord, not just repayment for what the enemy took, but they get all the spoils of war. Father, I pray that as they're blessed, they would remember you. Father, that they would be able to be the people that give 90 and live super comfortably off 10. Lord, that they would be kingdom funnels for resource for ministry because, Lord, you invade earth, but it's through us that you do it. I pray that they would say yes, that they would not fail the test, that they would be successful in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You can clap for Jesus. I don't know why you guys are so scared to clap. <laughs> you can clap. It's not for me. I'm a tattooed middleman. Like, uh, Jesus is getting it all. I know that. It's okay. <laughs> it's just funny to me. People are like, I just do we clap. You can clap. It's okay. Because the Lord's speaking. Amen? Hmm. 
Let's just wait a moment. Let, let the Holy Spirit hover. How does that sound? He likes to hover. <laughs> He's a good helicopter dad. Just close your eyes. Tell Jesus you love him. Some of you are looking at me like you should be looking at him. Jesus, you're so good. <sighs> Holy Spirit, you are so good. Hey, Michael, would you come up here, please? Just come stand right here, facing me. How's it going, homie? Great. Everybody extend your hands towards Michael. When we were up here talking earlier, the Holy Spirit kind of started stirring my spirit about you when we were talking this morning. And um, usually I don't prophesy over people when I know anything about what they're doing, just because I try to protect the integrity of the gift. Um, and so the word that I got, I felt was good because it wasn't directly about your business business. Um, <laughs> but I started praying this afternoon and this evening. And while I was up there tonight, I was scanning the room. And every time I looked at you, do you know the show, the TV show, Hee Haw? Right. Y'all remember Hee Haw, right? I saw you dressed like one of those dudes where you had like on a plaid shirt and a piece of wheat sticking out of your mouth and some bib overalls and a straw hat on. That was the image I got. And I was like, Lord, I don't know what that means. And the Lord's like, um, he's called to be a farmer. And I was like, what does that mean? He's, he's called, and he said, he's called to be a farmer. And I was like, okay, I don't know what that means, Lord, because that's not what he does for a living, I don't think. I mean, maybe you do on the side, I don't know. But I was like, Lord, I, I don't know why you want him to be a farmer. And the Lord said, because he's called to plant seeds He's called to farm other people. You're, you're like a farmer that you had a field and all your crop was growing up and um, it was people. They were the crop and you were investing in them the seed that you had. Uh, I'm not talking monetary seed. I'm talking wisdom seeds where you began to become a father of the entrepreneur and you began to sow into them and help them and they grew up and they produced all this fruit. Um, but it's, I guess it's okay for you to own a farm too. <laughs> if, if you wanted to, you could own that too. Amen. Grow your own crops. But I felt really strong like the Lord said that you were a farmer, like a gardener, and you were called to help tend other people's gardens. And I saw something come out of it that was really interesting. I saw like a group of multimillionaires that you were able to speak. They became successful. And it was almost like this special group. You couldn't just, it was invite only. And it was people that you sewed into and you started this network of spiritual sons that became successful. And their success became your success. And the Lord said, there's this thing in you that's more valuable than any money. And it's this eternal uh, seed that you have that creates generational wealth for others that didn't have it. They didn't get the chance to get it. And so I want to pray for you for that. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So Father, I thank you for the farmer. Lord, I pray that he would uh, find those that are good seed. Lord, that his time will be poured out like rain. Lord, that they will grow and mature and they will produce fruit. Lord, I thank you that he'll be a father to many in this business realm. Lord, where he feels maybe like, well, why would I even do that? Lord, you have so much wisdom in him. Lord, it's, it gets to be the marriage of ministry and marketplace. Lord, and I thank you, Father, for what you're gonna birth out of it, that it'll be just as big as his business. Lord, that he'll be sought after, that literally men will sit around and go, man, if I could just get in his group, if I could just get in his entrepreneurial group, like everybody that steps out of there is successful. Lord, I just thank you, Father. That's really sweet. The Lord said the, the best thing about you is not your money, but it's your heart. 
the best thing about you is not what you can provide monetarily, but it's the house that you make with your heart. Lord, I thank you for his heart, that he loves people well. Lord, I pray that he would fulfill and walk out the fullness of his calling. In your name we pray, amen. Well, isn't Jesus awesome? I love me some Jesus. Can I just tell you, like, everything goes away when he shows up? Everything bad? If you think you're too fat, too short, too skinny, too tall, whatever your issue is, when he shows up, it doesn't matter. Like, you're just, you're lovely. I wish you could see. I wish you could see how lovely you are. Because he thinks you're lovely. Even if people don't know how to love you, he does. And he thinks you're lovely. You don't have to be perfect, you just have to be willing. You don't have to have a PhD. <laughs> You just have to be obedient. Okay, I guess we're gonna go there. If you're in the room and you've been emotionally hurt by a relationship, maybe somebody you dated harmed you and put bad ideas in your head about your value. Maybe somebody you were with, it hurt your self-esteem. If that's you, I want you to stand up. We're gonna pray for you. You're gonna get healed right now. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, all of you that are standing, come up here. Come up here, you lovely people. Just line up. Just form a straight line right here. There we go, come on over. You know what I'm reminded of? My favorite Christmas movie. Do you all have favorite Christmas movies? For my wife, it's Elf. She loves Elf. I love Elf too. I have Elf Crocs. But my favorite Christmas movie is Rudolph and the Island of the Misfit Toys. Because they go to that island and there's all these toys that are just different. Right, it's like a, a elephant with pink polka dots on it, right? And they all weren't enough for somebody else. But there was somebody out there that they were perfect for. And so I want to pray for y'all. I want everybody that's seated just extend your hands. If I could get anybody from the prayer team just to kind of shadow me as I pray for people, I'm going to start down here and I'm just going to lay hands on you. Um because the enemy has lied to you about your value. And for some of you, you got stuck emotionally at the age you were hurt at. And so we're gonna, we're gonna pull those arrows out and we're gonna take you into some freedom, okay? Let's start down here. What's your first name? Emma. Can I pray for you, Emma? Lord, I thank you for Emma. Lord, I thank you that Emma is fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, and I speak to the places in lovely Emma where the words of man were like arrows. Father, and we pull out those arrows, those lies, those attacks, and I say, Emma, baby, you are perfect. You are worth being loved. And I release you from the lies that were told to you. They were told to you because you were so exceptional. The enemy didn't want you to believe it or know it. And you were mishandled by the hands of people. And I declare over you in the name of Jesus, not a hair is out of place on your head. You are worthy to be loved. You are worth being loved. You are nobody's second choice. You are the number one pick. 
I just release value over you in the name of Jesus. As a father, I tell you, you are gifted, you are smart, you are beautiful, and you have value, and the world would be a lesser place without you in it. So we release life. I know. I know. It's going to be okay. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we just break the lies in the name of Jesus. And Holy Spirit, we ask for your truth. We exchange the lie for a truth in Jesus' name. What's your first name? Tara. Lord, I thank you for Tara. Father, we just release identity in the name of Jesus. I say, Tara, you are not too much for people. I just declare that people are better for knowing you. That you are a gift to people. You are the gift. That you don't ever have to sweeten the deal that you're worthy to be loved simply because you're lovable. Lord, I pray that she would see herself rightly. Lord, we break our agreements with any lies, with any performance-based love. Lord, where there's any place where she feels like she has to earn affection or value, and we just declare you are valuable. Lord, we rebuke the words of man that were lies launched by the enemy. And we just declare that you are number one. You are not plan B. You are number. You are plan A. Lord, I pray that she would never lower her standards, that the more she raises her standards, Father, the more she's in alignment with her value. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What's your first name? Amber. Lord, I thank you for Amber. I just declare in the name of Jesus that Amber is worthy of being loved that Amber is worthy of being cared for. And we just break any agreements with lies. In the name of Jesus, any words spoken by man, anything of saying that she was too much or not enough or whatever it was, Lord, we just declare in the name of Jesus that she is fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just release you from the wounds of perfection, feeling like you had to be perfect and you couldn't make a mistake. We just say perfection has moved into you. And when God looks at you, he's not disappointed. That he sees a good daughter and a good girl. Father, I pray that she would understand her value. That she's a treasure. That she's not to be tolerated, but to be celebrated. McKenna. McKenna. Lord, I thank you for McKenna. Father, I pray that McKenna would know her value. Lord, that McKenna would know that you see her as a bride in robes of white. Father, that you love McKenna. Lord, I pray for any place where McKenna has been lied to. We just rebuke the lies of man. In the name of Jesus, I pray that she would know her value. Father, that she would see that not a hair is out of place on her head. That she's worthy to be treated well. Father, I pray that you would continue to anchor her identity in you as a daughter of the Most High God. That she would make a new agreement with truth. First name? Paige. Paige. Lord, I thank you for Paige. Lord, I thank you that Paige is not too much. Lord, you made Paige to be sassy. Lord, she's awesome. <laughs> Lord, uh, she won't back down from a fight, Lord. When the enemy comes, she puts up a fight. Lord, I thank you for the tenacity in her heart. Lord, and I pray for any place where she's been lied to by man, where she's been told she was stupid or didn't have value, or where she was made to feel like she was to blame for things falling apart. In any instance, any lie, Lord, we break our agreement with that in the name of Jesus. I just declare that not a hair is out of place on your head, that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, that you are a gift, that you are not a burden, but a gift. Lord, I thank you for Kim. 
Lord, Kim was a gentle flower that was almost stepped on. Lord, I thank you that Kim is gentle in heart and worthy to be treated well. Father, any place where Kim had been lied to, where there was words of man that felt that she was degraded or devalued, Father, we just say Kim is a queen. Kim deserves to know that she is loved, that she is valued, that she's not too much. Lord, I pray that Kim this year would fall in love with the woman she sees staring back at her in the mirror. That this would be the year that Kim stops picking herself apart and she agrees with her value. I declare over you, Kim, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you are a treasure to be celebrated. You are not a project, you are a daughter. Father, I pray that she would see her value. Lord, I thank you for Jonathan. Father, I pray that any place where Jonathan has been mishandled, Lord, any place where his manhood has been challenged or he was devalued or he was given words that attacked his identity, I just say that he is a good guy, that he's one of the good guys. Father, that he doesn't have to fear of turning into something else. Lord, that he's not the villain in the story, but he's the hero. Father, I pray that he would see himself rightly. Father, any place where he's believed a lie about his value, we break it in the name of Jesus. Any place if there's a, a father that hasn't spoken identity over him or spoke the wrong kind, we just declare in the name of Jesus that you are a good son, that you have value. If there's a place where a woman has spoken to you in a way that's devalued you, we just declare that you are 100% man. That you are 100% man. That there's no failure in you. That you are not to be tolerated, but you are to be celebrated. Lord, I thank you for Jennifer. Father, I thank you for Jennifer's heart. Lord, I pray that Jennifer would see that she is a woman of value. Father, any place where her boundaries have been crossed by the hands of man or the words of man, Father, we pray for restoration in those places. We agree to break the lies that have been spoken over her in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would begin to repair the places in her so she can trust again. Lord, rebuild faith and hope. Lord, I pray that she would have the gift of forgetfulness, that she'd be able to forget the past. I declare over you, you are not a haunted house. You are free, and the past has nothing on you. Lord, any place where she's been lied to, we break that in the name of Jesus. We come into agreement with healthy identity. Lord, I thank you for Stephanie. Father, I pray that Stephanie would see herself rightly, that she would see that she's a gift to people. Lord, where there's any place where she's believed a lie about her value or her identity, Father, we break agreements with that in the name of Jesus. We declare life in the name of Jesus. Lord, that she would be in covenant with truth concerning her value and who she is. I pray that you would smash lies Lord, in the battlefield of her mind, that you would be victorious. That she would see her value. That people are better for knowing her. That she's not a burden, but a blessing. Lord, I thank you for Grayson. Father, I pray for any place where Grayson has been mishandled or betrayed. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, any place where he's been lied to, that you would heal those wounded places, that he would see that he's a good son and a good man. Lord, that he has value. Lord, I pray that he would know himself, that he would not settle, that he would not lower the standards or lower the bar, but that he would continue to hold a high standard, that he would see he's worth being pursued as well. 
Lord, that any place where people have misspoke or challenged his identity, Father, that you would heal those places in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for Pepper. Father, I pray for any place where Pepper has been lied to, where somebody has used her or misused her or devalued her. Jesus, that she would break her agreement with any lie about her value, that she would see herself rightly. We rebuke any abusive words of man, any damage that was done in the name of Jesus. We release new identity in Jesus, that she would know who she is as a daughter, that she would hold on to her value, that she would never stand at the back of the line or feel like she disappears into the background, but she would see she's worth the view. She's worth being known. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Marilyn. I thank you that you said Marilyn's worth it. Marilyn's worth the effort. She's worthy to be loved, Lord, in any place where she's been mishandled by the words of man, where somebody has hurt her. Mm. Lord, I thank you that this is the year that Marilyn gets to take the gloves off. It's like I saw this picture of you in a boxing ring with gloves on and your dukes were up and you had to have this wall up for so long in this survival mode and the Lord just saying, I'm lowering your gloves tonight and I'm taking them off. And the Lord's saying, we're gonna break any lie that was given to you through the words of man. And I just declare over you, you are a good daughter. You are a good woman. You are worthy to be loved and to know love. You deserve love the identity that Christ has secured for you. So Father, any place where she's believed a lie, we break our agreement, Father, and we just come into a new agreement with your identity and your love. Lord, I thank you for Jessica. Father, and I pray where Jessica's been mishandled, Lord, that you would heal those places. Any place where someone has said words that have harmed her or devalued her or made her feel less than, Lord, we break our agreements with that and we come into a new agreement with value, with purpose, with destiny. I say that she's worthy to be known and loved, Lord, that her identity would be anchored in Jesus, that she would not waver on her value, that she would fall in love with who you created her to be, I pray that this would be the year she comes out from under the microscope. The Lord says, honey, you're tougher on yourself than I would ever be. And he said, I'm, I'm not judging you the way you judge yourself. He said, I want you to be free. I want you to feel light in your heart. He said, I haven't brought suffering to your door and I'm not judging you. I'm not weighing everything. He said, I'm just trying to love you. So Lord, I pray that she would not fear perfection, but understand that perfection has moved into her. Lord, that she would come out of any place where she's believed a lie. Lord, I declare not a hair is out of place on her head. You are not failing God. You are fulfilling his heart. He's not waiting with a hand raised to beat you. He's, he's waiting with arms raised to hold you. Father, I pray that she would run headlong into your chest and bury her face in there and let you love on her, Father. Victoria. Lord, I thank you for Victoria. Lord, I thank you for Victoria who had, to, who had to become tough before her time. Lord, I pray that Victoria would be healed. Lord, where there was boundaries crossed, Lord, that you would restore those boundaries. Lord, where there was places where the words of man or the hands of man went that made her feel less valued. Lord, we declare identity in the name of Jesus and healing. The Lord says, honey, I'm going to restore your boundary. Lord, she's another one that had to put up a wall to survive. And the Lord says, I'm bringing you out of survival, honey. And I'm bringing you into thriving. But the Lord said, baby, you got to give me all that pain. You got to give me all that frustration. He said, I can take it. So Lord, I just thank you that this next year is about her being vulnerable again. Lord, that you're going to restore her trust again. Lord, I thank you that you are also a God of justice. So you remember, 
Lord, and you will give out justice where it's due. Father, I thank you that you are with her. Lord, that you walk with her, that you stand with her. I pray that she would believe the truth that she's worthy to be loved. This is a big phrase that the Lord wants to speak to you, honey. He said, I am not disappointed in you. So Lord, I thank you that you're not disappointed, that she needs to come out of the season of blaming herself and into accepting herself. Lord, let her identity be anchored in you. Lord, I thank you for given. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, any place where she's been mishandled, lied to, or put on like the stamp of not enough was put on her. And I just declare you are enough. If I was enough, why would they do this? If I was enough, why would they do that? If I was enough, why would they say that? Lord, I thank you that she's enough. You're nobody's backup plan, honey. You're worth being chosen first. You're worthy to be chosen first. So Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, any place where she's been lied to, mishandled, we break our agreements with that trauma and we come into agreement with her identity in Jesus. I declare you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Not a hair is out of place on your head. You are a daughter of value. You are a daughter of purpose. And even those that hurt you will see your light shine. Lord, I thank you, Father, for all the ways you're healing her and gonna continue to heal her. Lord, I thank you that she's worthy to be loved and will be. <laughs> Zoe. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for Zoe. Lord, any place where she's been lied to, where, some, where she opened her heart and somebody took advantage of it, or she opened her heart and somebody stepped on it or spoke wrong identity, I just declare over Zoe, you are enough. Zoe, I just want to say from the Lord, anyone would be lucky to have you in their life. If somebody treated you like you were tolerated, they were a fool. If somebody treated you like you were a burden, they were a fool. If somebody took advantage of your heart, they were a fool. They don't know the blessing they missed out on. Lord, I pray that her identity would be anchored in you, Jesus. That as she moves forward, Lord, in her life, that she would not be confused about who she is because of the stupidity of man, but that she would see her value that she would know her identity in you. <laughs> that she would see that she's an event. She's not just a person, she's an experience. Lord, and I thank you that somebody gets to be very blessed to go through that experience. Lord, and I just pray again that she would keep her standard high because as she raises the standard, she'll raise the caliber of people that come into her life. Lord, keep her grounded in you. Lord, I thank you for Christopher. Father, any place where Christopher was mishandled or hurt or taken advantage of, we break that lie in the name of Jesus. Any damage, any place where he was lied to, Father, we break any agreement with that pain and that trauma. And we just declare in the name of Jesus that he is a good man and a good son and a good person. Father, I pray that he would be anchored in your identity. Jesus, that he would see himself in you, that you would show yourself to him, Jesus, that he would see that he has value, that he has purpose. Lord, that he's not easily replaceable. Lord, that people are better for knowing him, that the earth is a better place because his unique perspective exists. Father, I pray he would walk out the fullness of his calling and knowing who he is. Lord, I thank you for Jaina. Father, I pray for any place where Jaina was mishandled, where the words of man spoke lies against her or put wrong identity on her. And in the name of Jesus, we, have, we break any agreement with that trauma or that pain. Father, and we release the identity that comes from Jesus. We declare that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
that you are not a burden, but that you are a blessing, that you are not troubled or troubling, but you are a blessing. Father, I pray that she would see, she, that's really interesting. <laughs> You're not, it's, it's like I saw you like a returned used item at Walmart. And the Lord said, honey, that's not what you are. He said, you're the new shiny thing at Best Buy. He's like, that's how I see you. <laughs> He's like, you're the, you're the good gift. And at times people can make us feel like we're a returned opened item. <laughs> but the Lord just says, honey, you have high value on the shelf, so high value that it's locked up behind the glass so people can't even touch it without the Lord opening the lock. So Lord, I just thank you, Father, for her value. I pray that she would walk out the fullness of her calling and understanding her identity. Christine. 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 Lord, I thank you for Christine. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that she would see her value, that any place where man has lied or released an attack against her personality or who she is or her identity, we just rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Any place where a man has made her feel like she's not enough, Lord, and we just release over her, you are enough for other people. You are enough for God. Lord, I pray that um, she would come under a new agreement, that she is a woman of value, that she is a woman of purpose. Father, that all the lies, all the arrows, Lord, would be dropping off in the name of Jesus that her mind would be renewed to agree with her value before heaven. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We serve a God that heals and restores and it matters to God that people are heartbroken. It matters to God that people get hurt. It matters to him. He's not looking at you going, well, just buck up, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. He's a good dad. And he's willing to walk through your pain with you. We actually serve the only God who's willing to crawl into the mud with us to pull us out of it. Amen. We serve a God that was willing to make himself dirty to lift us up and make us clean. Isn't that good? Well, amen. Okay, I'm done. Love you. Who do I give this to? <laughs> Somebody grab this microphone before I get in trouble. It's fun to watch the Holy Spirit bring healing to people, isn't it? Amen. I'm going to ask you guys to just keep it going for a little while and let the Lord continue to do a work. Everybody else, stand with me. If you want to stay and seek the Lord and come to the altar, you can do that. If you need to be dismissed, you can. I'm going to pray over you and declare the goodness of the Lord over you. Would you just lift your hands to the Lord? Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people. Lord, I thank you for, for faithful people that, will, were, that uh, aren't scared off uh, from three-hour church services. Lord, I thank you for a remnant of people that are hungry to see a move of God. Would you bless these people, bless them this week. We pray favor upon their relationships, their business, their families, their children. May your favor rest upon them and everything that they do. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that this is a, a, a year of encounter with you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow after you. In Jesus' name, and so shall it be. Amen. If you want to find a place to pray here at the altar, you can, or if you need to go, you can be dismissed. I would just ask if you do so, do keep your talking for the foyer.
while the Lord's still doing a, a work here in the altars. We love you.